we're going to transform that initial, sometimes jarring blank screen into a slick, professional, and even animated experience using Android's official API. And so stay tuned and let's get started. You know what I'm talking about, right? You tap an app icon and for just a split second, you get hit with this flash of a blank white screen before anything actually loads. It just feels clunky, unprofessional even. This is exactly the problem the official Splash Screen API was built to fix, giving you a smooth, seamless transition for right from the start. The new Splash API is the official modern way to do it. It's built right into the app startup process, which means it's way more efficient, super smooth, and just looks professional. Okay, so let's get our hands dirty. Getting started with a modern splash screen is actually way more straightforward than you might think. It all starts with just setting up the basic foundation in your project. It really boils down to three simple steps. First, you just add the official library as a dependency in your build.gradle file. Then you sync the project, let it do its thing, and then comes the important part. First, open up your version.toml file. Inside the versions block, you should already see a line for the splash screen library. If not, go ahead and add it now. That's our version reference. Next, scroll down to the library section and add a new entry for the splash screen module, pointing it to the version you just defined. This keeps everything clean, organized, and easy to update later. Now jump over to your app level build.gradle file. In the dependencies block, add the splash screen dependency we just set up, then hit sync. And that's it. Your project now knows about the official splash screen API and is ready to use it. If you've been following along from the last part, you should already have the install splash screen screen function called inside your activities on create method. That's the line that tells Android to actually use our splash theme before loading the main UI. If it's not there yet, make sure to add it right at the top of on create before calling set content view. Otherwise, the splash screen won't display properly. So with that setup out of the way, let's build our first static splash screen. We're going to replace that blank screen with a nice clean logo. For that, let's add our logo quickly in our project. Inside the app module, right click on the SRC folder and choose new image asset. In the dialog that opens, pick your SVG app icon. In my case, I'm going with a nice little tornado icon. For the background layer, set the asset type to color and choose white as the background color. That keeps things simple and makes the icon stand out. If the icon looks too big or too small, you don't have to guess. Just use the resize slider and watch the preview update in real time until you're happy with the size. For the final touch, change the shape to circle so it feels more modern and consistent with typical Android launchers. Once everything looks good in the preview, hit finish. Android Studio will generate all the necessary assets for you in the right folders. Inside the new theme, there are four key attributes to know. The parent has to be themed. Splash screen, the post splash screen theme um, tells the system what your main app theme is. You know, for after the splash is done, then you set your background color and then the crucial part, your icon. Now, this is the first little gotcha. You're going to use the attribute window splash screen animated icon. I know it sounds weird for a static logo, but trust me, this is the right one to use, and it perfectly sets us up for animation later. So you've added your icon, you hit run on your app, and whoa, it's gigantic. Now for the really fun part, making it move. To bring our icon to life, we need to understand three core building blocks that all have to work together. First up is vector group. The easiest way to think about this is as the stage or the target for our animation. By giving that group a unique name, we're basically telling Android, hey, this is the thing I want to animate. Next, we have the object animator. This is the script. It's a whole separate XML file where you define the animation itself. You say what property you want to change, like rotation or scale, for how long it should last, and what its starting and ending value should be. And the third piece is the animated vector drawable. This is the bridge. It's the glue that connects the first two parts. It's a special kind of drawable that points to your static icon, and then it links that named group inside the icon to the object animator script you just made. It's the piece that brings it all together and makes the magic happen. All right, so we have understood about our building blocks. You know the what and the how. 
Now let's put them together. Check out this timeline. This shows how you can add some real thinness using keyframes. Notice the animation doesn't just start immediately. For the first time, the icon just sits there. Then it starts to rotate and zoom in. One last important bit before we jump into the coding. Okay, but what about older phones? This is a super important question. It's crucial to remember that all these cool animations are only officially supported on Android 12 end up, and on the other, the total nightmare scenario, that exact same code causing an instant crash for someone on an older phone. Android gave us a whole new toolbox to play with, with attributes like Windows Splash Background and Windows Splash Animated Icon with API 31, they literally did not exist before API 31. They were invented for that version of Android. So what happens is when a device running, say Android 10, tries to load your app's theme, it sees something like Windows Splash Planet Animated Icon, and it has no idea what that is. It's like trying to read a word in a language it's never seen before. The entire solution is just a, a specially named folder, values v31. That's it. This one folder lets you have the best of both worlds, and it's so simple. So what's so special about this folder? Well, it's what we call a resource qualifier. It's basically a special instruction to the Android system um, that says, hey, the files in here, they're only for devices running API level 31 or higher. First, the phone checks its own API level. Then it looks to see if there's a special resource folder that matches its level, like our v31 folder. And here's the most important part. If it doesn't find a specific match, it just safely falls back to the default values folder. No edits or formatting changes have been made. Okay, enough talking, let's get coding. Open up your launcher foreground.xml file. You'll notice there's already a vector group defined in there. That's the element we're going to animate. First, give that group a name. We'll call it weather logo. This is how Android will know exactly which part of the vector we want to target later. Next, let's tweak the pivot X and pivot Y values to make sure the logo is perfectly centered. That's important because any rotation or scaling we apply will happen around this point. Now, try adjusting scale X and scale Y just to see how the icon changes size. We'll use these same properties later when we animate our logo, but for now, this quick test will help you understand exactly how it reacts to scaling. Next, we want to set up the object animator that will actually drive the motion. Start by creating a new animator folder inside your res directory. Then inside that folder, create a new file called logoanimator.xml. In this file, the root tag will be an object animator. Inside it, we can control different parts of the animation using property values holder elements. For each one, you give it three things. The property name you want to animate, the value type, and the from and to values for that property. Uh, in our case, we want the icon to rotate and also zoom in. So we will define one property holder for rotation and another for scaling. And that will give our weather logo a nice, smooth, animated feel. Next, let's wire everything together with an animated vector drawable. Create a new XML file and name it logo score animator holder.xml. For the root tag, set it to animated vector. You can think of this file as the glue layer. This is where we tell Android three things. One, which drawable we want to animate. Two, which animator file should be used. Three, which group inside the vector should receive that animation. So inside this animated vector, we'll define a target that points to the logo animator.xml file we just created, and we'll set the name to match the vector group we defined earlier, which in our case is weather logo. Now that the animation is in place, let's move on and create our theme for Android 12 and above. So the system actually uses this as our splash screen animation. All right, so at this point, we've created our theme at our theme.xml inside the values v31 folder and set up theme.weatherwise.splash. Uh, the parent for this theme is theme.simplesplash, which gives us that clean, modern foundation to build on. Inside this splash theme, we're using the new attributes we talked about earlier. The post splash theme in our case is just the app's default theme. So once the splash is done, it hands things over to your normal UI without any weird jumps. What we haven't done yet is define the background color and the branding image. So let's wire those up. First, open your regular colors.xml and add two entries, one for the splash background color and one for the splash icon slash image color. Then just like we did with the theme, 
create matching entries in values night slash colors dot XML. So everything looks right in dark mode too. Now let's hook in the brand logo we created earlier. This step is completely optional. Like, so if you don't want a branding image on your splash, you can just remove that attribute from the theme. But if you're using it, make sure you update the vector's fill color to use the splash icon color you just defined. That way, um, the logo will render correctly in both light and dark mode without you having to maintain separate files. And with that, we've got a fully working splash screen that respects light and dark theme, uses our custom branding, and plugs nicely into the Android 12 Plus splash screen system.